This is my first time filming at night and honestly, not hating it. Wow, hating this hair though. What are wrap ups? Am I right, ladies? Who is knocking? This is our life now. I'm back. I haven't been doing wrap-ups regularly because I think end-of-the-month wrap-ups are sort of toxic since there's that pressure to finish so many books before a month is over so I've just been kind of chilling and letting myself read whatever I want and then as soon as I feel like it I'll post an update about books. Just got an email from Starbucks. Don't care. So since I've last talked to you, I have read a, a lot of books. So I'm gonna try and keep this brief. I'm gonna keep these really casual. First book, Raven King with Maggie Stiebotter. This is the fourth book in a series of four books. So it's the final book. It came out in May, in March. I don't remember, but I read it pretty late compared to everyone else. Didn't get spoiled, thankfully. Final thoughts on the series. I love the characters. That's why everyone reads these. It's because the characters are so great and so relatable and so fun. This one I felt like, I don't know if it's because I've grown up or because it's not the same. I don't know. It just felt different. Like I didn't love them as much as I used to. This is bothering me that I can't sit up straight so let me fix my tripod better. I wasn't the biggest fan of the conclusion. My friend told me I might not like it because it's anticlimactic and I agree with that. I think there's so much build up to a thing that doesn't happen or it does happen but it's that's a spoiler <laughs> i think if i'd binge read the series it would have been more impactful but i didn't have time to reread the other three before reading that one so i just kind of suffered through it without remembering anything gave it four stars that was pretty good not like the most action-packed conclusion to a series but we'll deal with it right ladies you know what i'm not going to mention any of these because they're my booktubeathon vlog so check that out if you want some thoughts on the other books i read cool so i don't have to talk about as many books as i thought i would <laughs> a book i read right after book two -a was adulting how to become a grown-up in 468 easy-ish steps by Kelly Williams Brown. This book as you can probably find out from the title is a non-fiction book that's just advice on how to be a grown-up which obviously I am in need of even though I'm a sophomore in college. I liked it. It was really funny and it was entertaining and the layout was really easy to follow but <laughs> I felt like this is a book for someone entering their early 20s and moving away from home rather than someone who's still in college so a little bit of a misleading title there which I guess anyone can be considered an adult over 18 but like I would only recommend this if you've graduated college because even the stuff that I don't know about like taxes <laughs> and all that stuff it talks about it as if you're ready to do it by yourself which is maybe the case for a lot of people but I felt like I probably couldn't have benefited from half this book just because I don't have to deal with any of those things yet also the layout of this book was pretty complicated like it would tell you you need to do something but it wouldn't tell you how to do that thing I just wasn't the hugest fan like it wasn't the most informed as far as how-to guides go. But I might revisit this whenever I'm in my early 20s and see if I have a different outcome that time I read it. So this time I only gave it three stars. Who keeps knocking on our door? We have another visitor. This is why you shouldn't make friends in college. So yeah, three stars for that one. Wouldn't say it's the best thing on the market if you're still like 18, 19. So the next book I read, I am so out of focus. Just please unsubscribe to me. I read Chopsticks by Jessica Anthony, which is a book that's told entirely through pictures. If you saw my book haul where I held this quite recently, I was talking about how I had no idea how that would go. I felt it was done pretty good. I think the way it was told was good, like I was never confused at the photographs and it was all really touching, but I just wasn't connected entirely to the storyline. Like it felt a little bit not relatable, I guess, to me. I thought it was a touching story. Like I said, it was really fun to read. It went by super fast and it was really interesting narration style but the characters weren't anything new to me and just the conflict was sort of nah. I could have been cuter I'm sure if I read another book by them like told in the same way I would enjoy it too but this one just kind of was nah, good not necessarily worth like the $30 it probably is I got it from book outlet so it was more than half off so that was a good deal and if you can find it there you might as well pick it up and see if you like it but if not I would say it was like a three star book for me so it wasn't horrible wasn't great next book I read I also got quite recently in that same book haul which was The Sculptor by Scott McCloud this is a graphic novel that is about a man who is an artist obviously he is a sculptor and he's been struggling lately with money he's living basically homeless in New York City and so he has this deal with 
death, basically, where he can sculpt anything with his hands out of anything and in exchange he'll die in 200 days or something like that. I've already forgotten. I thought it was really interesting. It was a really big graphic novel and it's one that I've been recommended a lot and I'm typically a big fan of big graphic novels because they have more time for character development and just like a more fleshed out plot. This one was no exception. I thought it was done really well. I liked the progression of it. I loved our main character. He was just super fun and since it's a book that's about a guy who's living on the streets basically because he needs money as an artist and he's in New York City which is where I want to be. I just thought it was a really interesting story and I liked seeing his like rags to riches story. I liked the entire deal where he's an artist and you get to see things he's created and like the thought process behind that. It was interesting. It was a really compelling story and I liked the characters so I gave it four stars. It was great. I would recommend it. The next book I read I actually listened to on audiobook. It was Days of Blood and Starlight by Lenny Taylor. The second book in the I don't think there's a series name for it just the first one is called Daughter of Smoke and Bone. This series is rather interesting. It's a fantasy that takes place in the human world but also an alternative fantasy world where there are angels and chimera which are basically like Narnia human animal hybrid type things and there's a war between those two species. It just follows characters that are all those different breeds and species in the way that they intertwine. It is so Good. I love the characters. I love the writing. It's a great series and I know not a lot of people talk about it anymore because it's been like two years since the last one came out but it's still banging. Highly recommend it. The audiobooks are great as well. It's set in Prague which like what book is set in Prague? Also the second one is set in Morocco so that's even cooler. I just think it's a really well done series. The characters are just so amazing. I can't wait to read the third one. I have it right there. It's gonna be read this school semester sometime eventually probably. Go put your hands on that if you have not already. The next book I read was Slammed by Colleen Hoover. Ding 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 ding. You're correct. I don't like Colleen Hoover and I need to stop reading and buying things by her but I can't. This book follows a girl who moves to a new place and she meets her neighbor and he's super hot and then things happen and he's not who he says he is. I can't spoil it but it's like the best part of the book. Why? This is just a like angsty contemporary new adult or this one's more young adult sadly. It follows just you know school and a girl and a guy and their angst. I just am not a fan of Colleen Hoover. I feel like she adds these tiny little things where she tries to be funny or hashtag relatable and it's like Hillary Clinton trying to appeal to the masses by like dabbing or whatever. It's so lame and it's so anti-feminist a lot of times and it's so annoying. It's like just stop. That's how I feel every single time I read a book by her but the reason why I keep buying them and I've gotten comments saying if you don't like her stop buying her books. I can't because they're so addicting. I read this book in like one sitting. I can't help it. So I didn't like this book. I gave it two stars. This isn't the worst one I've read though. So like I respect it, but it's just uncomfortable to read and it's not fun and the dialogue is so ridiculous. You might've seen my Snapchat rant about this. It was lit. But anyway, I'm gonna move on. Did not like it, but I'm still gonna keep reading her book because I can't freaking stop. This roller chair is changing my life. Transitions will never be the same. The next book I read, <laughs> I was feeling some more trashy books after I finished that one, so I went ahead and picked up Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. <laughs> if you've not heard of this book, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's basically vampire porn. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the reason why I picked it up. Sarah J. Mass, my mother, she recommended this book. I don't remember if it was like a, this series is so good, you should read it, but I know for a fact that she said if Selena read a book series it would be that series and so I knew in the back of my mind Sarah J Mess likes that I'm gonna like that it's gonna have such great world building the characters are gonna be so fleshed out then I read it then I realized it was basically porn with no plot line and the plot line there was was kind of sacrificed for the sake of there being more porn <sighs> not that that's uncomfortable for me to read or anything like it wasn't disturbing it was just so inconvenient to have such high expectations for a book and in the end it's all just down to the two characters wanting to get it on so I mean it was again and read it fast because it was just something light and easy but it wasn't the most spectacular piece of fiction I've ever read. I hear the series gets better. Honestly I looked for the second book in a used bookstore kind of just like 
so I might grab that if it holds my attention long enough, but if it doesn't, it was just something to pass the time. I gave it three stars. The next book I read, This Is Where It Ends by Marika Nightcap. I have a review of that, so you can go check that out, and I'm just gonna mention it briefly here. It's a book about a school shooting, and it's set in four different perspectives of four different students whose lives are interconnected. I thought the plot itself was just super horrific and gripping and tragic, and I thought that part of it was super interesting, but I think the plot is the only thing it has going for it, because the characters aren't spectacular, the writing isn't spectacular, and just it wasn't all there for me. It was just interesting, but that's about it. So I gave it three stars just because it was, you know, it kept me engaged for reading a book in two sittings, and I, again, have a review, so just check it out if you want to go see all my full thoughts on it. But yeah, three stars. Wasn't amazing wasn't bad though. The next book I read was First and Then by Emma Mills. This book is a contemporary novel written by a girl who's actually a YouTuber and I love her. She goes by Alma5. If you have not seen her videos, she changed my life. Middle school would not have been the same without her. This is her first debut book. It's a contemporary novel about a girl named Devin who's in high school and she has just recently had her family take in her cousin Foster because his mom has been attached to drugs and incompetent. It follows her life with this new sibling. He joins the football team. There's a football player that she's interested in and it's a lot of angst. If that sounded boring, I'm just gonna let you know. It was. <laughs> I had super high expectations for this book because I love Emma. She's so articulate and genius, but this one was just boring. I don't know if it's because half the book was football technology and football players and football parties and football games, but I was so done with it by the end of it. Hopefully her next book, which I know comes out later this year, will be more interesting and better than this one, but this one felt like it had no point. I feel like the story should have been told from the cousin's perspective rather than hers because he's the one actually doing stuff and she's just kind of there like chilling. I don't know. I thought it was so boring. I wouldn't recommend picking it up unless you're like as bored as I was reading this book. Mm, two stars. And the final book I read, it's actually a reread. When is the last time I ever read or read a book? It is the graphic novel Sex Criminals Volume 1, One Weird Trick by Matt Fraction. This is a very peculiar series, if you can't tell from the title. It's basically about this girl who whenever she does the dirty. Time stops and so she has however much amount of time that that happens to go do whatever she wants while the world is frozen and she finds an accomplice and they have this whole mission to do while they're, that was so disturbing in my head the way I was about to say that. It's just a hilarious story. If you can imagine, it's just super sexy, super weird. The characters are hilarious and sometimes the awkward scenarios are just like cringeworthy to read, but at the same time, it's just n like nothing you have ever read before. It's a book that's not afraid to break the fourth wall, so the entire book, like something will happen and the character will turn to you and be like, huh. Am I right, ladies? It's a refreshing graphic novel because there's not many out there like it. I would recommend it, but there's some inappropriate parts, as you could imagine. So as long as you're okay with that, I'm currently reading the second volume and that one's pretty good as well. I'm sure I won't mention that one in my next wrap up just because I'm talking about it now. I like the series, it's great. I would recommend it, but again, not for every single little child out there. And with that 17 minutes being over, sorry I talked a lot, I was meaning to keep this casual, I have now completed all the things I've read since we last talked. Feel free to follow me on Goodreads, feel free to follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, and I, I'm just self-promoing myself right now. I just need to stop. Thanks everyone for watching, hope you're having a wonderful life, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.